and it's for everybody to kind of get joined in and settled, um, get your materials all together. And then we'll get started in about a minute, two minutes. Okay. All right. All right, if you're just joining us, good morning and welcome to block two, week two of livestock. Um, I'm going to give about 30 more seconds. We still have some people uh, joining us, so we will get ready um, to have some fun today. Um, we did send in the box of materials a little, I believe it was bright orange, um, a list of some materials that um, we couldn't send through the mail. Um, so if you make sure that you have your measuring cups, um, some water. Um, if you do have a carbonated drink, that would be great. It's not um, imperative to have. So if you don't have any sort of carbonation, that's fine. We can just use water. Um, and then make sure you have some um, scissors, uh, a Sharpie or a black marker, um, and some glue or, scissor, or a tape or um, a stapler. Um, awesome. Okay, we'll give about 15 more seconds. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So good morning again. Um, welcome back. We are so excited to have all of you joining us today. Um, and we, we are so happy to see um, some familiar names on our list. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, today is all about livestock. Um, and so we're just going to jump right in because one of our activities might take a little bit of time. Um, and I don't want to hold you too much over nine o'clock. I know um, the last few presentations, we've been a little bit past nine. So I am going to do my best to try to just get through this so that you guys can enjoy um, a really humid uh, Tuesday, you know, afternoon. All right. So let's see. Okay, our first activity is called Excellent Embryology. Um, and this is one of our newer activities that was just designed last year during COVID. Um, and we're super excited about this. So um, I do want to add that we do have books on the screens that you can see. I'm not gonna go into detail with um, any short summaries or anything just because of the time that we have. So they are up there. Um, we have chosen books to put up there that pair you know, great with um, you know, the activities that we're doing and have really strong ag themes in there as always. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and go on to the activity. So um, with excellent embryology, uh, you can use this really at any grade level if you are incubating eggs in your classroom or even if you're not incubating actual eggs in your classroom, but you want to talk about embryology and, and look through at that process. So our excellent embryology um, activity uh, helps kind of, um, you know, uh, go more into further depth about the embryology and what's happening on the inside of the egg. Um, we have on our worksheet that it's third through sixth grade because that's typically the age group where teachers are, you know, getting eggs and incubating them in their actual classrooms. Um, and so that's, you know, but it, it can go for any grade level. It can even go for high school. Um, and this can be used in many different ways, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So let me just get on to this. So all of you guys got some cardstock um, with the different stages of uh, embryonic development of a chick. So on the back side, 
it has what is actually happening at each stage. So it takes 21 days for, um, for the embryo, or I'm sorry, for the chick to develop. Okay, and so we have 21 pictures here. Um, on the lesson, let me go back just to show you where this is. So right down here um, on the front page of the lesson that we have provided for you, there is a little note that says to print the embryo picture so that the pictures line up with the facts. Um, you need to print, um, put your printer settings to be printed on both sides and to flip on the short edge. Um, and then that way, when you print this double sided, then the facts line up exactly with the picture that, you know, that it's supposed to be. Um, and then we also have printed them on cardstock. Um, Obviously, in your classroom, you can do whatever is easiest, whatever resources you have. We chose cardstock because it's a little bit more durable. And then we would cut them out, laminate them, and then cut them um, out all together. So you would print them, um, you would cut them, laminate them so that they're long lasting. We know how kids can be with some of these materials. Um, and then you would also get onto Amazon and get these little white um, Easter eggs and you know Amazon just has everything so you have these white Easter eggs and then you would put one of the days of the development in each egg so you would need 20 eggs all together and then the 21st day the chick hatches and so you could have like a little you know chicken stuffed animal. Um, we did not include labels just yet. We, we're going to be working on labels for the eggs if, if that's something teachers are interested in. Um, but basically, you could use this in, in a lot of different ways. You can have, um, you can print this so that, you know, you can have small groups each have their own set um, and really work through the embryology. Um, or you could do it as a bell ringer and just have them open the egg. Um, could be a part of stations. There's all sorts of ways that you could use these. But once they open the egg, then they can see what's happening. So this is day 20 right here. The, the chick is fully developed and getting ready to start hatching. Um, and then you can see the facts are on the backside of what's actually happening. So this is a really cool, um, a cool activity that you could use either in place of using actual eggs in your classroom um, or in addition to using them. So one of the things that you, um, you probably do if you incubate eggs in your classroom is to use a candling method to see what's actually happening on the inside. And sometimes that can be pretty difficult to actually see what's going on um, or for students to, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of differences in the colors. And so um, a lot of students might have a hard time seeing that. So this could be an, an example of an in addition to, you know, you do the candling and then you can show them this. Um, and so I do want to show you this video. It's about six minutes long. So last year during quarantine, um, uh, Chris Wyant, you all probably know him from all of our videos. Um, he and his son Lincoln um, incubated eggs and did videos um, for all of the days that they incubated the eggs and went through a lot of different information. These are awesome videos that you could use um, as an extra resource in your classroom when you're if you're going to plan on um, incubating eggs or do you know use this activity. Um, and they are all on our blog which is www.beyondthebarndoor.wordpress.com. And there is up at the top a tab um, and it's for uh, Illinois eggs in the classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this video um, that talks all about candling eggs. Good morning, everybody. We're here to show you what happened last night when we candled our egg. So if you remember, we built this egg candler. Yep. All right. Uh, you'll notice we have some tape on it now. We'll explain that in one of the videos, what we did to try to kind of modify it a little bit. So before we show you our eggs being candled, let's talk a little bit about what's going on inside the eggs right now. Here's an illustration of what's going on inside of our egg. So we started incubating our eggs last Thursday night. And so this is Friday morning. And so our eggs are probably somewhere in this range right here. So you can see still really teeny tiny inside there, but things are gonna start happening really, really fast. So between day five and eight, the range that we're at right now, some really important things happen. The leg bones form, the feather buds appear, the eye starts developing rapidly, the knees start bending, the beak becomes visible, the intestines begin to loop, and the eye tooth forms. 
So these are all really important developmental milestones that are happening. Now we candled all of our eggs last night. We have 14 eggs and they're two different breeds of chickens. We think that at least eight of the eggs are, are incubating and they're, they're turning into chickens. The other six we're not so sure about. We left them in there for now because we thought maybe it was a little bit too early to tell. And so once we get to this like eight to 10 day range, it should become much easier to tell if, uh, if we have viable chicks inside of them. And so at that point, we'll decide if we need to take any of the eggs outside of the incubator because they're just not growing. So with that, let's show you what it looked like when we candled our eggs last night. All right, so we have our candler set up. So we have the lid off. So turn that off for a second, Lincoln. Okay, it's a little bit All right, so you can see so it looks like. And if we turn it on, all right, like. so that's what we're going to use to try to see if we have chickens developing. All right, so we felt like maybe the hole that I drilled was a little bit too big, so we decided to put some painter's tape on here to try to make the hole a little bit smaller, and we're going to try that out and see if that helps us see inside the eggs a little bit better. I see the head. You think so? Well, on the camera. I kinda, on the camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's white on the camera. Okay, here. Think so, so what happens if you, can you turn it for me? Yep. yep. In there? Yep. <laughs> we see the head. Okay. So turn See it? Uh huh. Okay, so that one's good, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna pause it there. Um. So uh, uh, with the candling eggs, like you see, um, sometimes it can be hard to see what's actually going on inside of the egg. Um, and they do make all sorts of different equipment that you can buy, or you can make your own like Chris and his son did. Um, but, but sometimes you just can't see. And so we have this awesome activity to go, you know, um, either coincide with it or uh, in place of it. So we hope you really like that activity. Um, again, you can get the eggs on Amazon. Um, and then um, all of the lessons. So we did, we did print and give you guys all the lessons. Now that version is in black and white, uh, but we are posting or we have it already posted on our blog uh, for today's page, which you will be sent to um, once we end the show or the show, this uh, webinar, um, and it'll have the colored version and you can find it there. Um, and so you can print it in color. All right, so. Our next activity then is gonna be our paper bag horse. So moving into horses, um, I am gonna talk about uh, the horse ag mag at the very end. And one thing that I really like about the horse ag mag is that it really talks about the history of the use of horses um, in the ag industry and what, what they're used for now. Um, because we have all sorts of tractors and different machinery that we don't use them uh, like they were used, you know, um, you know, a hundred years ago. And so um, it's really cool to see that transition over time. So check out the horse ag mag, which I'll talk about at the end at the end. Um, but this is our paper bag horse. Again, we have some awesome books. These are uh, the top three are going to be more uh, junior high or I'm sorry, grade school level. Um, and then you could even use them in sixth grade. They're appropriate for sixth grade. Um, and then War Horse would be a middle level, upper level uh, novel that you could use. So our paper bag horse um, activity, you're using a paper bag to just create a horse um, and then talk about the different markings. So we did include um, a sheet that shows the different type of markings that horses have and the names of them. So when you're starting to look into horse breeds and you know all that fun stuff, you could have your students decorate their uh, paper bag horse um, that, you know, to look like their favorite breed or their favorite markings um, and all of that. So we are gonna go ahead and do our very first activity. So what you're gonna need is um, your paper bag, your scissors, your Sharpie and your yarn. And I apologize for the words on there. They got kind of messed up when I downloaded this. Um, 
So your paper bag, what you're going to do is take your permanent marker and draw a U shape, uh, starting with the top of the U um, at the top side of the bag where it opens. And you're going to start about um, halfway down and then draw a U shape um, just right there, just kind of like you see in the picture. It doesn't matter what side um, of the bag you draw this on. So go ahead and draw your U shape. And then you're going to cut on the line. Okay, so now you have two different pieces, one which is the top of the bag and it looks like the U shape and the other part is the bottom of the bag, you can see here, and this is going to be the ear. So what you're going to do is slide this on like this. So it used to be like this and you're just pushing it up and use your glue or your stapler or your tape to secure those two together. Okay, so now you have your horse. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take your little yarn and you're going to put some glue right in the center and glue or tape or uh, staple your yarn on there. Um, I would suggest not using, if you're doing this with your younger kiddos, you know, kindergarten through even, you know, third or fourth grade, and let's be real, even sixth graders. Um, I, I would consider not using uh, liquid glue because it is just going to be a mess. So now you have your little hair right there. Um, and then you're going to take your Sharpie and you can draw your eyes and your nostrils. And you have your paper bag horse. Okay, so cute, so fun, super easy for kids to do. They have a little craft, so you're getting some art in there. Um, they are using different materials. You can have something playing in the background that's talking about horses. Um, there's lots of cute shows that talk about horses and have horses. Um, so you can just have that playing in the background or maybe some old Western you know, music if you're looking at you know, the history of horses. Um, and then you can have them decorate their horses again with maybe their favorite uh, facial uh, features or the markings on their faces like that um, little activity that we had shown you, um, or you can have them color them. You could definitely use white paper bags um, and then have them color it based on, uh, you know, what is their favorite breed of horse. And you can look into all the different breeds, what are horses used for, you know, all that fun stuff. And then they have a cute little craft. You could even punch holes in here and have them, you know, make masks and cut out the eyes. You could do all sorts of fun stuff with this. So this is our paper bag horse activity. Super fun and cute for um, the little kids. My nieces loved this. We did this this summer. Um, did not take them very long at all. Uh, the youngest one is pre-K um, and then the older uh, niece is in third grade um, and they just loved them. And we looked through the horse ag mag and um, my third grade niece, she was reading the stuff to me. Um, so lots of fun things that you can do, um, whether you're implementing this in your classroom or sending the stuff home um, to make that, that communication with parents. We know as teachers that that is really important to uh, communicate with families. Um, and so that could be something that you do. Hey, we made these paper bag horses today. We're sending home a copy of the horse ag mag. Um, and, you know, look through it with your kiddo and ask them what they learned today in class. Um, so lots of cool things that you can do um, with our paper bag horse activity. Um, I'm going to check our questions. All right, so there's a couple questions on here that I will respond to um, at the end once I get all the way through this stuff. Um, and so um, it, if you can't see me, I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, it might be something on your end with, um, with the, the settings that you have set up. As long as you can see um, the stuff on the screen and you can see, um, and we have the activity that has the pictures with the final endings, um, I hope that helps. I, I, on my end, there's not really anything I can do. Uh, so I wish I was a Zoom expert and could help you out. Um, 
But okay, so our moo mask activity, this is when we're talking about dairy, our dairy cows and dairy farms and all of that fun stuff. We went into uh, a little bit more depth last week. Um, so our moo mask activity, again, super simple materials. Um, and there's a few different ways that you can do the ear tag with this. Um, and this example right here has them uh, using the number of letters in their first and last name. Um, and so we know that all uh, cattle have tags um, for identification. So you can definitely go into depth with that with your students and you know why we do that. Um, and then there's different ways that you can do this. On this example right here, we are using the number of letters in the first name, which would be nine for Jonathan plus the number of letters in the last name would be four. And then when you add those together, the total is 13. So we have nine, four, 13. So we're getting a little bit of math in there. Um, you could also uh, do the name tags by birth dates. So mine would be zero, three, two, eight. Um, a cool thing that you could do then is once they get their, uh, their moon mass all put together, um, then you could have them line up in numerical order. So then we're challenging them to then look at different numbers and try to put them in order. Um, and you can have them do it the first time to see how quickly they can do it. And then a second time, um, you know, with a different number, maybe you do one with the birthdays and then one with the, the number of letters in their name um, and see if they can do it faster and just kind of make it a fun challenge, getting up out of their seats, um, working together, how to communicate with each other. There's lots of cool things that you can do um, and a lot of cool skills that you can teach just by doing a fun little challenge like that. So our Moo Mask activity then, uh, you're gonna need one um, or two small paper plates, your big paper plate, your dinner size paper plate, um, your permanent marker, and then um, your tag template. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, maybe this will help uh, so that you guys can see me for, for if there's anybody having trouble. I, I'm really sorry, I wish I could answer your questions on that. Um, I'm not a Zoom expert, unfortunately. So we have our materials here. What you're gonna do is take your very first uh, small size paper plate and just cut it right in half. Another thing that you can do with this is then talk about shapes. If you're with your younger kiddos and looking at different shapes, if you cut a circle in half, what kind of shape does that make? You could look at numbers. If we're taking one whole plate and, and taking it into two, what kind of fraction that would that be? Um, so then with your other small paper plate, you're gonna attach those as the ears. So whether you're using glue or stapler or tape, go ahead and attach those. Okay. Wow, mine are not sticking that well. I think probably a glue stick on the paper plates that we got may not be the best option. Okay, now what you could do is if you are um, teaching an age group, whoops, there goes his ear. Um, if you're teaching an age group that uh, is responsible or knows how to use scissors, you could have them cut out the eyes. Um, if you're teaching those younger kiddos, um, you could use your permanent marker and have them draw those on. Okay. I'm just gonna staple this on so that you guys can see without it falling off. Okay, so you have your, your head right here and it looks a little funky, but what we're gonna do then is add the bottom, the dinner plate to make um, the nose portion, the snout. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple that on. And now we have our moon mask. So what you could have them do then is draw the nostrils on here. 
you can have them draw a smiley face. You could have them decorate it with cow spots. Um, and you could also, there's different color paper plates. So you could do um, the brown paper plates or if you could find black paper plates and then talk about different breeds of, of cows and cattle um, and what they're used for. For our dairy cows, since this is specifically um, a dairy activity um, and you can turn it into any, it doesn't have to be um, for just dairy. Uh, but if you are using it for dairy, then we definitely want to uh, determine the difference between uh, dairy cattle and beef cattle. Okay, and so you could have them start drawing, um, you know, the spots on there. So that is our moo mask activity. Um, of course, if you want to wear them as actual masks, you would need to cut out the eyes and then attach string. Um, and if you have them do both of these activities, you might be able to put on like a little skit or have them, you know, write a story and perform it for uh, their classmates. So we got some, um, some different activities that you can do there. All right, I'm gonna check the questions, see if we've got any more. Okay. Um, oh, you know, I, before I move on for the, the ear tag then, I apologize, I did not get a lot of sleep last night and I feel like my head is scrambled right now. So if I seem a little off today, I'm gonna just blame my lack of sleep. Usually I need like eight hours and I think I got maybe four. So. Okay, so then you will attach their little ear tag on their ear and you have a nice little dairy cow. How cute is that? All right. So that is our, our third livestock activity. We are moving right along. Um, let me get back to our slideshow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, another dairy activity that you could do is called our uh, beautiful bovine. Um, if you were with us in January when we were uh, celebrating dairy, um, for our January dairy theme, um, you, you might have already seen this one. Um, if you have, it's a great one to watch again because Lincoln is just so cute. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen this, then enjoy this activity. Super fun to do for younger kiddos. Um, and you could even do this in uh, even up to sixth grade. I know my sixth grade students would have loved to do something like this and just had some fun with it. Today we're going to learn how a cow is different than a human. First, cows have really big ears compared to humans. Cows have tails, which is good because they don't have hands, but if they have tails, they can swap flies off. A female cow has an eye, which she uses to make milk. Cows are ruins, which means they have four parts to their stomach. Cows have rough tongues so they can eat. Humans have skin, but cows have hides. Cows don't have hands, but they have four hooves. Okay, such a cute little activity. Oh my gosh, I just love that video. Um, so some really cool things that you can do. Um, Lincoln was comparing uh, the anatomy of a dairy cow to the anatomy of a human. Um, and so that would be something that's really cool to do. Um, uh, to start comparing the different uh, structures of different types of animals. Um, and you could definitely go into more depth with that with your older kiddos, even fourth, fifth, sixth grade. You know, what is the reason that they have uh, those different um, adaptations? Where in the world do we find these? Are they different breeds? You know, there's just so much that you can go into with that. Um, and then jumping back, you could even do that with um, the embryology activity. You could definitely look at, okay, well, it takes, you know, 20 days for the egg to, you know, develop or the chick to develop within um, 
within the shell before it hatches out on the 21st day, uh, how long does it take for other types of animals um, to uh, have their babies? What are the different types of ways? Uh, this one lays eggs, this one has a live birth. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with comparing and contrasting um, anatomy and embryology and all of that fun stuff. Okay, so now for our rumination navigation. So on the screen, I will, um, I'll stop sharing my screen once we get to the activity, but I do wanna show you, uh, we included um, these pages for you uh, in your box. Um, and these are some awesome resources. So this is the full lesson plan. You have the very first page. Um, there is a teacher resources page, which all of our teacher resources pages, if um, you're not familiar with our stuff or our new uh, lesson designs, um, the first page is gonna just give you the basic overview of all of the information. And then the backside is gonna be our teacher resources page, which is gonna include um, ba any background information that we feel you, know, you need um, just for a basic understanding of, of some of the information. It's gonna have extension ideas, ways to differentiate um, this lesson in your classroom. It's going to have suggestions on how to uh, pair uh, different activities with this. Um, and then sometimes we also um, either include a diagram of some sort um, or what the finished product looks like, just to give you an idea. Um, and so all of that is available to you. Um, and then on the screen, what you're seeing is the student worksheets. So there are four of them all together. Um, the first page is just the setup. Uh, students making sure that they have all the materials, that they're, they're doing the pre-setup before they actually do the, the whole activity. Um, then the, the two pages in the center that are kind of on top of each other, this is the actual instructions. Um, we designed this to look like a board game to kind of be more fun and, um, and kind of it, it flows easily and it, it's just not a boring little worksheet. So hopefully your kiddos like it and like that design. Um, and then the very last page is just um, some labeling and making sure that they uh, comprehended the activity and they're going back. They can um, answer short, short answer questions and they can use evidence from their experiment, you know, to start getting um, in touch with that scientific language, um, supporting their ideas, um, using evidence from their activities, you know, things like that. Um, you could definitely pair this with um, either our dairy or our beef beef uh, ag mags, and there's a lot of different uh, fiction and nonfiction things you can pair with this, um, but specifically if you're asking them to provide evidence, you, you want to have that nonfiction text like we, you know, we all know that, but um, super, super uh, fun stuff. So um, these are all the materials that you should have with you. So um, you should have six paper towels. Um, we gave you a, a paint strainer. Um, you should have your spoon, measuring cups, water, carbonated drink, five baggies, uh, your potato sticks and pop rocks, um, and then the activity out in front of you. So let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and I'm going to walk you through this. So I hope that you join me um, in doing this. And before I get started on this activity, um, we love that you guys are all joining us. Um, and so we uh, want to do something fun with you. When this, um, when this presentation ends, there is going to be a post on Facebook uh, that, you know, uh, gives you some more information of where to sign up for next week's block. Um, but thanks you think it, oh, it thanks you for joining us today. And we, we love to see that you guys are doing the activities and that you've received our materials. Um, and so we are putting it out there. So if you, uh, take a picture of your materials, um, your finished products for, you know, following along, you know, if you did the, the horse, uh, paper bag horse with us or the moo mask, um, if you could take a picture of that, uh, or at the end, or you could even do a selfie if you want with your activities, and then um, post your picture onto that post. And that Facebook post is not going to come out until the end of this, um, until about 10 o'clock. So go onto Facebook, find that post, um, and then and it's going to have the picture that was just up on the screen with all of the materials. 
um, and then upload your picture in the comment section. We are gonna pick two random winners and send you a prize uh, because we just love that you guys are joining us and we're super excited to have you here and we love giving free stuff away. So uh, take a picture of all your materials, you know, uh, your finished products. Um, and I just wanna say that we, we do like to reuse these, whether we use these in post later um, or for whatever reason. Um, so if you don't want, yourself in that picture. Um, just take a picture of, of your materials. But um, I just wanted to put that out there. So uh, at the end of this, jump on our Facebook after you fill out the reflection and um, we will draw two winners uh, probably at the end of today. Um, so get those up there uh, today before 4.30 so that we can get those mailed to you. Um, so our rumination navigation, let me turn to our sheet. So if everybody, if you are following along with me, go ahead and in your packet, turn to this sheet right here, okay? Um, this is gonna be the first sheet of your student instructions, your student worksheet, and it gives a little introduction to your students right up here that just gives a basic, in, you know, a little summary about what the digestive system is responsible for. Uh, we all have uh, digestive systems. Humans have our monogastric, so we only have one part to our stomach, um, whereas our ruminants, they have four parts to their stomach. Um, and so it just gives a little bit of information for that. So we want to say, well, gosh, what is, uh, what's going on? Why do cows have uh, such a, you know, intricate stomach system? Um, and so then you could definitely look into, uh, you know, what type of food they eat and all that stuff. So this is your setup. When you have your students do this, now this is this would be appropriate for um, fifth grade uh, or up. Um, if you want to do this for your younger kiddos, I would definitely suggest doing a demonstration. Um, they'll still get the idea at the end. It's still an awesome lesson to, to use with your younger kiddos and introduce some of these terms and these ideas. You know, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, first graders, they're not going to remember the word rumen or uh, reticulum, um, and they're not going to remember, you know, what it does, but they've been introduced to those words, and they're being introduced to the process of digestion, which is important, um, and especially for our dairy cows and our beef cattle, uh, what we feed them and what they eat is important for the quality of the milk and um, their meat, and so that's a huge thing. Um, so this is the very first sheet. Um, if you're giving this to your students, uh, then you definitely want to make sure that they're following these instructions. Um, at the get-go. So this is what we're going to do right now. So you should have all of your materials. We sent you a lot of them. So we're going to move on to this step right here, which is labeling some of our materials. We need to know what the materials represent, so we have to label them. So go ahead and grab your baggies, your strainer, your spoon, and your paper towels. You just need two paper towels for this part. And I do want to add while we're doing this, um, we sent you a uh, sandwich size baggies. You can use the snack size and just use one paper towel and fold them up. Um, whatever, whatever works for you and whatever is available for you or in your budget, um, it, it's up to you. So we just, we just use these sizes, but it, it doesn't make a difference. It's all going to do the same. So if you look on your, um, on your sheet, one of the baggies needs to be labeled mouth. Okay, your spoon then needs to be labeled esophagus. So we have mouth, we have esophagus. Another baggie needs to be labeled rumen. So we have rumen. Um, your strainer, so your paint strainer needs to be labeled reticulum. which as a Harry Potter fan, I love this word because it sounds kind of like a magic spell, uh, you know, like fixing the, you know, the glasses or something. Now, I, I do want to mention we're using paint strainers. Um, I would highly suggest if you're going to do this activity, either as a demonstration or have your students do it, to use the paint strainer. Do not try to attempt using coffee uh, filters. I tried so many different, uh, you know, materials when, when creating this activity. Um, the paint or the coffee filters it the water just drips through um, very slowly like coffee filters do um, 
and then it ends up tearing. Um, this, these paint strainers allow the water to go through pretty quickly and then you can kind of squeeze the top um, and it works out perfect. So you can get a you know, huge set of these at Lowe's or Home Depot for you know, just a couple dollars. So um, definitely use the paint strainers for these. Um, your third baggie, go ahead and label Omasum. Your fourth baggie, label Abo Mason. Okay. Your fifth baggie, label uh, small intestine. And then your two paper towels, go ahead and fold them in half and label just at the top is usually where I do it. Um, large intestine. So we have our large intestine and I just put L because I am being lazy. Okay, so we have all of our labeling done. The next thing we need to do is uh, introduce some of the liquids that you would normally find in the different parts of the stomach. Um, and we need to go ahead and get that set up. So it says we need to add a fourth cup of water to the baggie labeled rumen. Now that liquid, the rumens are typically filled with about halfway full of water um, when you're looking at the actual rumen. And it's not water, it's just, it's just different stomach intestine or liquids. Um, it's not the acidic liquid like we would find in our stomach. That is gonna be found in the abomasum. So you have your fourth cup of water, okay? Then it says uh, for your Omesa, go ahead and take two paper towels, fold them in half, and go ahead and stick those into your Omesa. Okay. We didn't stick those in very well. So we have our baggies in our Omesa. Then we need to add in the Abomesa about an eighth cup of a carbonated drink. Now, if you don't have a carbonated drink with you right now, just use your water. It, it's just fine for this activity. The only reason we are suggesting using a carbonated drink is because it's kind of uh, bubbly um, and it reminds us of the actual acids in our stomachs. It's different than what you would find the liquids in the rumen, but the abomasum is the compartment of the ruminants um, stomach that is most closely related to the monogastric stomach. So most closely related to our stomachs. Um, on a side note, I would also suggest using a clear carbonated drink um, because if you're using maybe like cherry Mountain Dew um, or root beer, it, it's probably going to smell when it starts mixing with um, the potato sticks. Uh, so just a forewarning, um, plug your noses because I don't think I made, I don't think I mentioned to use a clear carbonated drink, um, but I will tell you that it is a little stinky. Um, and then your last two paper towels are gonna go into the small intestine. Now our paper towels uh, are uh, representing the functionality of absorption. So if you are looking into, if you're teaching, you know, fifth or sixth grade or above, uh, you definitely want to go into detail with the structure of the different compartments. What are the different folds for? Um, why, what, what is it actually absorbing? What are the materials? Is it just like different parts of the food? Is it the liquids? What's going on? So for your uh, older kiddos, get more in depth. For your younger kiddos, it's just basically showing the movement of the food and talking about how we're breaking down the food that we eat into the most smallest um, compounds uh, so that it feeds our body so that we can, you know, do whatever we need to do as, as living creatures. And so all of our uh, organs, you know, are functioning. Um, okay, now that we have it set up, we're going to go ahead and go through this. Um, we're going to start on this page. Now, I did say that this looks like a game board. I also included a lot of just some extra information. So as your kiddos are going through this, um, or as you're going through it as a demonstrator, uh, you can read it, they could read it and get a little bit more information about what's happening at each stage. We also wrote um, a nonfiction uh, text. It kind of looks like a, an article um, and it's called Moving On Through. And that goes into even more depth about what's happening at the different stages. Um, 
And that will be found on the page, um, on our blog page with all of this other information uh, that you can find, which um, is the same page from last week. Um, okay, so what we're gonna start with is the cow has to first eat the food. So we're gonna add about a fourth cup. And just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna measure. Um, and you don't have to measure either. I included measuring cups to help students practice uh, using uh, you know, more precise measurements, getting used to different, uh, the language, you know, a fourth cup versus you know, a, a, an eighth cup, you can get into fractions, all that stuff. So you have your food, but we don't just chew with a dry mouth, we also uh, produce saliva. So um, I put in there to add about a tablespoon. I'm just gonna dump a little bit in here. You do not want it to be soaking wet. Uh, you just want it enough to kind of start mushing this together. Okay, so you can talk about the different processes. Uh, we're using our hands to kind of uh, mush this up just like we would be chewing on the food. It's starting to break down that food. The saliva, the enzymes in the saliva is also starting to break down that food. It's the very first part of digestion. So now that we have our crunched up material, the cow has to swallow. So we're gonna use our esophagus. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is have your baggie open, your rumen baggie. When the cow swallows, the first compartment it's gonna go into is the rumen. Okay, so if you have kiddos working in a group, have, you know, some of them read, have them, you know, have jobs. One of them can read the instructions. One of them can, you know, hold open the baggies. One of them can use the spoon. Um, if you're doing this by yourself like me, it might get a little bit messy. Okay, so the cow has to swallow. So we're just gonna use our esophagus to move that food down into the stomachs the rumen. Okay, now I do want to say that you can also go into detail about the structure of the cow's mouth and the teeth. They do not have any of these front teeth. They do have two uh, incisors at the front, the bottom, and then they have molars. So they don't always chew their food up completely this first go around, okay? And so, I mean, sometimes we don't either. If you put mac and cheese in front of me, sometimes I don't even know if I'm chewing at all. So, we, you know, but we don't regurgitate our food. But this is what a cow does. So then your food is in the rumen. And so then um, another thing that's gonna happen in the rumen is that there are microorganisms in there. You're basically feeding the microorganisms in your stomach. And so to represent that part, we gave you some pop rocks. Okay, super fun. Um, go ahead and uh, use your teaspoon. I accidentally grabbed a tablespoon. Um, I'm just gonna dump this in here because I can't find my teaspoon. So. This is the fun part for the kiddos, or one of the fun parts. When you dump your pop rocks in there, you can hear them popping. And you can talk about, well, that's them starting to uh, break down and eat that food. Another thing is they're gonna create a byproduct, okay? And so you can uh, start talking about, well, what's a byproduct? Well, they're gonna, um, they're going to produce some gases that build up in the stomach. And then, you know, cows have to release that air somehow. And so um, we have a lot of cows burping. Okay, um, another thing I wanna suggest that a fun thing, which is actually really disgusting, is to look into how much saliva uh, one single cow produces um, in a year. It's, it's pretty extraordinary and your, your kiddos will be super grossed out and love it. So fun thing. So you have your rumen. Um, another thing in the instructions is to say, well, wh wh what's happening in the rumen? The rumen has contraction. So in the instructions, it just says to lift up and drop. And you can see that movement of the water right there, okay? And that movement is what's gonna start pushing uh, some of that liquid into the reticulum, okay? Um, and that is an, a really important part. So what you're gonna do is take your reticulum, open up your omasum, stick the reticulum right on top because the omasum is the next part, okay? And your cow, um, the, the reticulum, the rumen just had a contraction and it spilled over into the reticulum, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just pour all of the stuff from the rumen, 
Now you're in, in real life, all of the liquids aren't gonna pour over. It's kind of like a wave pool and the waves come up and some of the water goes out onto the sidewalk, you know, or, you know, where people are walking around, um, but the water's still in the pool. So that's kind of what it's like. So you have all of the liquids. Well, gosh, uh, our food didn't go through. What's going on? Well, the reticulum is there and anything that's not digested or broken down enough um, is going to get caught right there. It's kind of like when you feel something in your throat, they, they, it applies some pressure, uh, um, right near their esophagus and that causes them to then regurgitate their food. So what you're going to do then is open back, open up your mouth again, and you can either dump it in there or use your esophagus or a little bit of both. Put your food back into the mouth, okay. And then in the instructions, it just talks about um, uh, using the bottom of your measuring cup to kind of smush this. So this is called chewing the cud. Uh, the cow has to, to chew it even further to make it easier for the bacteria and the microorganisms to start breaking it down even further. It was just too big. Um, it, it's not digested enough or it's not broken down enough to be digested. So they're just gonna take the bottom of their measuring cup and kind of smush it, okay? Now, this is where we come to the end of page one. And on the bottom, of the next page is where this starts, okay? And it says pit stop. And it talks about how the cow would go through this process over and over and over again until it's uh, broken down enough to move through the reticulum into the omasum. Uh, but for the sake of time and for the sake of this activity and just as how it's written, we're just gonna move right past that. And we're gonna pretend that uh, it is moving um, on into the omasum. So your cow swallows again, it's gonna go through that whole thing, uh, but instead you're just gonna push it into the omasum again. And the paper towels in your omasum, you should see that they are, you know, pretty soggy, okay? And that is what is uh, what we're looking at with the absorption. The omasum uh, is part of the, I mean, it, it absorbs a lot of those liquids um, and some of the materials from the food, okay? So we have our wad of food, we have the absorption of those liquids, and now it's gonna move into the abomasum, okay? Now, I'm just gonna keep using my spoon even though it's the esophagus. Uh, you can have your students put on a glove or use their hands or just dump it in there um, or just have it just use one of their measuring spoons so they don't get confused because, you know, the esophagus isn't, you know, part of everything. It's just that first part. So then we have the abomasum. Okay, this is the uh, the. Uh, compartment that's most closely related in terms of functionality uh, to our human stomachs. Um, and that's where it's more acidic liquids that are in there that are really starting to break that down even further and get some of those uh, nutrients out of the food. Okay. Um, a lot of the nutrients are going to be absorbed initially in the rumen, but there's still a lot of nutrients that are, are going to be absorbed in a lot of those liquids. So you have your omasum. That is then gonna move into the small intestine. So I'm going to, you can either pour all of the liquid in there or just the food. I'm just gonna do the food. Some of the liquid is gonna pass through, but not all of it. So you have your small intestine, okay? It's absorbing a lot of those, um, a lot more of the liquids. And then you have your large intestine, okay? And in between the small and large intestine, there is gonna be some bacteria in there, some microorganisms. It's not just all bacteria, but we've got some microorganisms in there that are working from that end as well, just for further breakdown. So um, in the instructions, it says that you can add um, a half teaspoon of the, of the pop rocks, just to show that they're, they are in that part of the digestive system. And in the large intestine, you are going to form this into either a cow pie or a little uh, turd. And the very last part 
of the digestive system is excretion. Um, anything that was not broken down and digested and absorbed, your body does not need. And that is called a waste product. Okay. So I'll just hold this with my hand. So you have a turd now. And this is the best part of the activity. Um, I did this activity with eighth graders with just the monogastric activity or activity, the monogastric digestive system. And they loved it. They could not get enough of it. Um, I used it as um, a, a formative assessment. Um, and I went around and asked them to explain what was happening at the different parts. We did use uh, just bread and one baggie um, and they, they talked to me about it and they just had so much fun. But this is super fun. You have your little turd um, and you just explained rumination. So uh, like I said, even if your younger kiddos aren't gonna remember all of the words, they understand um, they're starting to pick up on the different processes and that it's a lot more intricate than um, just the humans, okay? And then again, you can go into uh, what do livestock even eat? Um, and then you can look at different farms that are livestock farmers. Uh, they raise their own livestock, but they also uh, grow their own food um, for their livestock and talk about that, that cycle, um, which is just so fascinating. Um, so that is our rumination navigation activity. Let me reshare my screen. Okay, um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm just gonna kind of go through this real quick. Um, all We have a series of livestock ag mags, uh, horse, poultry, dairy, beef, and pork. Um, we talked about these last week. Uh, you can get these uh, classroom sets uh, for free from your uh, ag literacy coordinator, your county coordinator, which you can find on our website. We will have that um, up there and uh, just find your coordinator and contact them. They have all sorts of free resources that they would love to bring into your classroom and teach these lessons to your kids um, and just bring you some you know, different free resources. We also have our one page ag ventures. These are gonna be appropriate for fourth grade and up. Um, third graders might be able to do some of this stuff, but, um, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. I would say for third graders, um, you could send it home with them and have them again, work with a family member. You could partner them up. You could just work through it together and show them how to, how to use nonfiction text to answer questions. Um, and again, we have all of our ag mags online on our website and they are interactive. So right here, the dairy ag mag, you can see there's a little green leaf in the printed version that will not be there, but online you can click on that link and it's gonna take you to a different source. So another good way to start introducing um, primary and secondary sources. Um, so really cool, fun stuff. We hope that you utilize those. Again, they're all free. Um, all of the ag mags um, you can find online interactive, get them free from your ag literacy coordinator and all of the ag ventures will be posted as PDFs on um, the blog page um, when we're done with this activity. Um, again, we cannot stress this enough. We have our summer book club coming up. Um, the very first meeting is going to be uh, July 14th, so just a few weeks away. Um, please sign up and join us to see if this is something that you're interested in. We're going to go a little bit more into depth about the book club and um, talk about the books a little bit. Um, and then what you do is you choose either the thing about luck, which is um, focused on um, uh, wheat harvesting um, and migrant labors. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic book, strong female character role. Uh, she's um, in junior high. It's just, it's such a great book. I love this so much. And then Flip the Bird uh, is all about falconry. Our main character is, is male. Um, again, these are going to be junior high level books, junior high upper level books. Um, you, could, you could even read them in fifth grade. Uh, that would be just fine. Um, but what you're going to do is choose one of those after this initial July 14th meeting. 
um, which is at 6 30 p.m. Um, and we will send you which book you choose for free uh, for all Illinois teachers. Um, and so uh, we'll send that to you. Then you have a couple weeks to read through it. And then on August 4th, um, if you chose the thing about luck, you'll meet back up with us uh, to uh, talk about how you can implement this in your classroom. We have a reading guide that we will share with you. Lots of different resources. You have to be with us on that night to get the resources. And then if you chose Flip the Bird, same stuff, but that would be on August 5th. And both of those sessions, again, are going to be at 6.30 p.m. Um, we do have two grants available this year. Um, one is going to be for a classroom book grant, and the other is going to be uh, a classroom project grant. Um, I'm not going to go into detail now, but on uh, August 5th at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, I will be hosting a webinar that is going to dive deep into both of the grants, going to give you lesson ideas. I'm going to show you what our past winners um, have uh, have thought of uh, their projects and what they were using their books for. Um, I'm going to talk about the language that they used, um, things that stand out to us, um, and all of that stuff. So if you're still on, you know, the fence about, I don't, you know, I don't know if I want to do this, just join me that day to see if this is something that you could implement in your classroom. Um, this the, the grant stuff is, uh, it's not teaching you how to write a grant. It's not for CPDUs or anything like that. Um, it's just me talking about the grant that we are offering. Okay, so I'm going to go into depth um, about it there. Um, again, uh, today, I am going to answer those two, the, the few questions um, in the Q&A, so stick around uh, so that you can hear the answers. Um, but today, uh, you will get... Um, you, you will uh, go to, I'm sorry, my words, oh, gosh. Um, you're gonna get sent to the, the blog, this page, and uh, this top one I crossed out because that's the reflection that was filled out last week. So you wanna go down to the one that says 629, that is today's date, and go ahead and fill out the reflection um, again. Uh, don't mind all of my mess ups. I, I'm telling you, if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I am just a mess. So I apologize for that. Um, and then the, the link underneath there is for row crops. So we have two more blocks. Block three is going to be all about row crops. And you're like, well, gosh, what could we do with corn and soybeans? Well, there's a lot of fun stuff that we have uh, going on. And then um, our last block is all based on specialty crop. Um, if you, for some reason, are having issues with getting the emails um, or it's not sending you to the blog uh, right away, this is the link, https uh, dot dot slash slash iaitc dot co slash June 22. That will also get you there. Um, or if you just go to our blog, beyondthebarndoor.wordpress.com, you can click this teacher training tab. And when you click that, it should be the top link right when you get to that page. But if it's not, it might be the second one and it'll say livestock virtual teacher training, June 22nd and 29th. So there's a few different ways that you can get to this. Um, I, you know, we just learned how to do all the Zoom stuff last year. We we're trying to keep up to date and, and do as much as we can with learning, but there's a lot of technical stuff that we don't have control over and, and we don't really know, you know, if there's something going wrong because we're just, that's, you know, we're not professionals in that area. So we're very sorry for that. We're doing the best we can. Um, and then lastly, uh, follow us on Facebook, Illinois Ag in the Classroom, uh, Instagram, which is at I-L-A-I-T-C, uh, Twitter, at Ill Ag Class. We also have a Pinterest board, um, which we're, we're starting to utilize more that has a lot of our activities on there. Um, so follow us. We have lots of different stuff on all three of these pages. Um, our Facebook and Instagram are going to be relatively similar, but there's going to be a little bit more on Facebook. Um, 
but please uh, do that. And also don't forget to go to our Facebook after this and upload um, a picture into the comment section of today's post uh, for rumination navigation. So that's all I have. I'm gonna answer these questions, but for those of you who um, maybe have something to do or you know, maybe your kiddos are screaming in the background, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know we always go a little bit over time. We have so much to share with you. And sometimes I do know that I talk too much because I just have a lot of stuff I want to say to you and, and help you. And I know what it is like to be a teacher. I'm still certified. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer these questions. So the professional development hours. Um, we this we are not on an approved provider. So what you're going to want to do is talk to um, go and talk to your ROE. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Uh, go to your local district, um, your regional district, your local district, and um, talk. Uh, talk to them about what, what they require from you. Um, every single district is different, even if it's in the same county. Um, so it's really hard for us to answer that question, um, but they will be able to give you the answer for that. Okay, so I'm sorry I can't be more helpful with that one. Um, Somebody received, uh, so Samantha, you received an email saying you signed up for livestock but didn't attend. Did not get a box. Um, let's see, I can look, I can look into that. Um, let me look into that and see um, if you, let's see. Yeah, because I'm not exactly sure. I know that um, it's it's the first 50 people, so so it could be something with that. Um, but let me look into that and and just check that out. If you want to um, send me, uh, get onto our website and and either our Facebook or something and, and send us your email, um, and then that way I can email you back once I look a little bit further into this because I'm not sure what would be happening. Again, I wish I was like more technical, like, in, I don't know, I wish I had better understanding of like computers and, and all this stuff. Um, I still like pencil and paper, so <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but please send us an email um, or uh, a message on Facebook with your email so that we can um, look into that and, and let you know what's going on, okay? Thank you for, for bringing that to, um, you know, to light for us. We, we want to make sure that you guys are getting our stuff so that you can uh, participate with us. So we will definitely get that. Um, are the ag mags available for purchase for those of us from out of state? Um, let me look into that too. I, I definitely think they are. There is an order process for that. Um, so Jamie and anybody else who is out of state, please look, um, please send us an email with that question just because when I end this, I'm, I'm afraid, I don't know if I have it set to save the, the Q&A part. So please look into that. Um, not please look into that. I'm looking into it. Uh, send me an email um, or find us on Facebook and send us a message um, just as so that I can contact you and get those, get your address and all that fun stuff. Um, and just so that I, I remember uh, to do that for you. That's a great question. Um, I, again, I just was hired last year, uh, a month and a half before quarantine happened. So there's a lot of things with like the, the ordering stuff that I'm not quite familiar with yet. And I, I don't want to uh, pretend that I am and give you wrong information, um, but I know that there is a way to do this. I just, I'm not sure how it works. So please contact us so that we can get those to you. Um, Let's see. Um, we send out all of the materials. Uh, Samantha, thank you. I will copy your email right now and get that. Um, we do send, we try to send out the materials uh, a couple hours after the first session. Um, so after week one, uh, and then um, anything that comes after that, we send out the next day for everybody. Um, and so if you're not getting, if you're not getting your boxes, um, 
again, I, I'm not sure what their reasoning could be. I, I need to go back and look at the list and, and see, you know, what's going on with that. So, um, Jamie, go ahead and, uh, and type your email in this chat. Oh, I see you just did that, just updated. I will copy and paste that as well. Okay. Um, okay, I will get that down. I'm sorry for all of the different uh, issues that we're having. Um, we will get that taken care of and we will contact you back just to you know keep you in the loop once we find out what's going on. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, and for those of you uh, who um, asked the questions, I will look into that right when I get done. Um, and Carla, all of the lessons uh, that we've been doing are listed um, on our blog. So the page, um, the page that uh, that you'll get sent to when I end this webinar, um, or on our blog under teacher training. We have tons of lessons on our blog. The one specific to the one that we did today will be on that blog page for today. Um, but we have tons of other activities on there. If you go into the different themes for that we've done for each month, um, any of our PD and our PJ videos, you can go back and revisit. Um, and all of the activities are posted on there as well because uh, we had different themes for each month. Um, and then we also have something called Everyday Ag that we implemented at the beginning of quarantine uh, that has just a ton of different ideas, uh, STEM-based ideas for K through three, four through six, um, and, and just some different resources and all of that. So all of that can be found on our blog. We are in the works of getting a new website, so it's a little bit easier to manage, but right now we're just really utilizing our blog. So go to our blog and just take a look around. Um, everything that we have posted on there is in PDF colored version, so they can be easily printed. All of the, um, all of the student worksheets and templates and everything are also uh, gonna be on there as well. Okay, so check out our blog. We've got tons of stuff on there. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, and I will get to looking into some of that stuff right when I end this. So enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.